Dr. Harrison Grant was considered a legend in the academic world. A tenured professor at Harvard, his mind was behind some of the most complicated mathematical theories ever published. On a crisp autumn morning, the Great Hall of Harvard was buzzing with anticipation. Today, Dr. Grant was unveiling a new equation, one he claimed couldn't be solved in under a month, even by the most brilliant scholars. As he took the stage, his voice echoed with confidence. What I'm about to show you, he declared, has baffled every mathematician I've shown it to. It's not just a question, it's a wall. If you can solve this, you change how we view mathematics. He turned and began scribbling symbols and figures across the massive chalkboard. When he stepped back, the board was filled with rows of dense calculus, abstract algebra, and quantum theory. The audience, made up of elite Harvard students, visiting professors and members of the media, stared in stunned silence. Among them, unnoticed, sat a nine-year-old boy named Noah Peterson. He was there with his older cousin, Sarah, a graduate student studying mathematical physics. Noah was small, wore thick glasses, and held a sketch pad filled with doodles and strange symbols. He was known in his elementary school for doing high school level math, but no one took him too seriously except Sarah. When Dr. Grant asked if there were any brave souls who wanted to try and interpret the first step, most chuckled nervously or shook their heads. But then, quietly, a small hand rose in the back. Sarah gasped. Noah, no! Dr. Grant squinted. Yes, young man. The room turned. Noah stood, clutching his notebook. I think I can try. Laughter erupted. Is this a joke? Someone whispered. Dr. Grant raised an eyebrow but smiled gently. You're welcome to try, son. Come on up. Noah walked down the aisle, stood on his toes to reach the chalkboard, and studied the equation. Then, with surprising calm, he picked up the chalk and began writing. His strokes were deliberate, precise. At first, the audience thought he was just scribbling nonsense, but as the steps unfolded, even the professors started leaning forward. Dr. Grant's smile slowly faded into a frown. He began muttering under his breath, checking Noah's calculations. Ten minutes later, Noah stepped back. Done! The room was silent. Dr. Grant stepped forward, his eyes scanning the board, his fingers tracing the symbols. He turned around, his voice shaky. This, this is correct. Gasps filled the hall. Cameras flashed. Whispers of, who is he, rippled through the room. Sarah ran to her cousin, eyes wide with shock and pride. Noah, how did you do that? He shrugged. It made sense in my head. Noah had just solved the unsolvable. And in that moment, the world had a new name to remember. One not found in Ivy League records, but in the quiet brilliance of a nine-year-old boy. Within hours of solving the equation, Noah Peterson's name was all over the internet. News headlines read, Nine-year-old outsmarts Harvard, child genius shocks Ivy League, and impossible solved by elementary student. But while the world erupted in amazement, Noah remained calm, more interested in his sketchbook than any of the attention. Harvard's dean personally invited Noah and Sarah to a private conference with the mathematics faculty. Dr. Grant, still recovering from the shock, stood at the front, this time without a trace of arrogance. Noah, he began, I've spent my entire life chasing solutions like that. How did you see what none of us could? Noah fidgeted in his seat. You were overthinking it. You were trying to make it hard. I just followed where the numbers felt right. It was such a simple answer, but one that humbled the room full of PhDs. Offers began pouring in. A research grant from MIT, an honorary certificate from Princeton, a scholarship proposal from Caltech. Even tech giants like Tesla and Google wanted to meet him. But Noah wasn't interested in fame. I still have spelling tests, he told a confused CNN reporter. Back in his small Massachusetts town, life tried to go back to normal. But things had changed. The school board offered to transfer him to a prestigious academy. His parents were overwhelmed by media calls. Sarah, now being hailed as the cousin who believed, was offered internships she had only dreamed of. 
One day, as Noah sat quietly at his kitchen table drawing a new sequence of shapes, Sarah asked him, Do you want to go to a fancy school, Noah, or work with big scientists? Noah looked up. I want to help kids like me, kids who like numbers but don't get called smart because they're not wearing a tie. That one sentence sparked an idea. With help from Harvard's outreach program and donations inspired by Noah's story, Sarah and her professors launched Project MindSpark, a national initiative to fund math and science centers for gifted children from underserved communities. Noah became the program's face, not because he asked to be, but because he was living proof of what brilliance looks like when nurtured. By age 10, he was helping design entry-level math curriculums for high IQ children, not to replace school, but to help those who saw the world differently feel less alone. Dr. Grant visited often. Once, during a seminar, he stood before a group of teachers and said, This boy reminded me why I became a teacher, to witness genius, not just define it. Years later, long after the flash of headlines faded, people still remembered the moment when a quiet nine-year-old walked into Harvard and changed everything. Not with a degree, not with a title, but with a chalkboard and a mind that didn't believe in the word impossible.